Hi everybody, I'm Acting Captain Kirk Hanneberry and welcome to the Frederick Police Department. We hope you enjoy your virtual tour of our police facilities. We're located here at 100 West Patrick Street, which is in the heart of the downtown area. We have over 150 officers within the Frederick Police Department. Uh, many of them come and go from this building every day. Patrol officers, detectives, uh, and our support staff of civilians, which is about 50 people, uh, work out of this building as well. Frederick is Maryland's second largest city. We have over 70,000 residents here who we strive to protect and serve. We have a uh, beautiful park running through the heart of downtown, which brings in people from all around the state and region. And we have a vibrant arts district, a restaurant area through Market Street and other areas of the city. And our goal here with the Frederick Police Department is to provide professional police services in partnership with our community. We hope you enjoy this virtual tour. We hope you get a sneak peek of what goes on inside this building and have a great time. Hi, my name is Audrey Hillard. I'm with the Records Department with the Frederick Police Department. We are currently inside of our records vault. In here we hold all of our files. So anytime a police officer goes and writes a report, we accept all of the paperwork and everything like that. It's my job to make sure that it's scanned in and placed into the proper folder and that it gets filed correctly. So as you can see, we have a lot of numbers. So we have a lot of people that I have to keep track of. So it's very important that our officers make sure that like dates and times and case report numbers are all put on their paperwork. So that way I can put it in a nice special place. We also have a UCR department, which is the Uniform Crime Reports, where we go and we report it back to the FBI and we tell how many different types of uh, events and stuff like that that we have. So if we have certain charges that we have to report back to the FBI, uh, we're able to tell them, you know, how many times this has happened, how many, you know, different types of reports of this we have, and we just collect all the data and then we report it back to them. Um, I'm also part of the section where if somebody needs a copy of a report, you become, you would, you know, talk to one of us and then we would be able to give you a copy. Say you're in a car accident or something like that, your insurance needs a copy of the report, we can go ahead and we can send it over to the insurance. That way you can get your car fixed right on up. So I'm very new with my job. I uh, actually just started here a couple months ago. I really like it. This is a super cool vault. Like, as you can see, you know, lots of files, stuff like that. There's actually five rows of this just in this room. And I have a whole other section of it downstairs in our basement that's got just as many rows and just as many files. It's pretty cool. Hi, my name is Dana Kelly. I'm the supervisor of the records and property section. You guys already saw Audrey give you a tour of the records vault. So I'm gonna show you a little bit about where we store some of our property and evidence. Property and evidence would be things that officers collect at crime scenes that we later use to prove or disprove a case in court. So we have to keep all of those items that they collect until the court case is finished. So we keep everything in a secured vault or other secured areas of the department. Only certain people are allowed access to those spaces. So you have to have a special card key to get in. So I'm gonna open the door and we'll show you guys the vault. So when officers collect items at crime scenes, they have to package them in a certain way so that we can store them here on our shelves. So a lot of things we keep in these envelopes like this. And we organize everything by case number. So when the officers need to take the items back out for case, then they contact the property section and we pull the items off the shelves for them and they take them to court with them or to the trial. And then when they're all finished with everything, they contact us again and they let us know that, and then we can pull the items and destroy them if we don't need them any longer. So we get all kinds of things. Um, we've had rocks where people have thrown rocks through windows. We've had officers collect rocks at crime scenes to see if they can get DNA evidence from them or fingerprints from them. Um, we've had bones in our property room. Um, we found some, some people found some bones recently and turned them into us. It turned out that they were groundhog bones, they weren't people bones, so we were able to throw them away. But that's probably the strangest thing we've had since I've been here. One of the other things that we do, in addition to collecting items at crime scenes, 
sometimes people will lose things and um, somebody will find them and they'll turn them into the police department. So if you lose your wallet or your car keys, sometimes people will turn those things into us. So we'll keep those. And if we can identify who the items belong to, then we'll send the person a letter and let them know that we have their keys or their wallet and then they can come here and pick them up. So if you ever lose something important like your backpack or your computer here in Frederick, and you think it might have been turned into the police department, please check with us because we might have it in our property room. Hi, I'm Jess. I'm one of the dispatchers with the Frederick Police Department. And we're one of the people that you'll talk to if you call us, you'll get us automatically on the phone. And we make sure that we get all the information from you and we get an officer out to help you just as soon as we can. And it's really important that when you call us or if you have to call 911, that you know where you are so that we can get help to you as quick as possible. So we have lots of cool technology that we use to make our jobs easier and to keep the officers safe. One of them is this map system where you can actually see all the officers and where they are in the city. So you can actually sit here and watch the officers grow down the street and to your house or to wherever they're going. It's really important that if you call 911 or that you call us, it's only for an emergency. These are not toys and they're very important and it's important that we have the phones open so that if someone with a real emergency needs us, they can get through to us. Hi, I'm Sergeant Carrado with the Frederick Police Department Outreach Supervisor and School Resource Officer. Today we are in our body-worn camera storage area and each officer on patrol receives a body-worn camera. They're trained on the body-worn camera, how to operate it, and how to tag the videos for evidence after each shift. When an officer starts their tour of duty, they come into this area and receive their body-worn camera. They film calls for service throughout the day, and then in the evening or at the end of their shift, they come back in and put their body-worn camera on the charger. The body-worn camera then uploads all the information and recordings automatically into our storage area. We use these to help us write reports and to send to court. Hi, I am Danny. I'm one of the crime scene technicians here at Frederick Police Department. So the role of crime scene is we are called out to scenes after officers have gone and secured the area and we are the ones in charge of collecting all of the evidence. So if we are looking for fingerprints or any like need to collect clothing or get DNA samples, that is our job on scene. And then we need to bring everything back here to the lab so that we can process it and hopefully assist officers and detectives in solving the crimes. So a few of the things that we use we take a lot of photographs. We have to document the scenes fully so that we get a good representation of what happened and what was uh, seen by officers on scene. And then we also, for collecting fingerprints, we use what is called latent print powder. It comes in many colors. This one, loving it, hot pink, it's my favorite. And we take a brush, dip it into the powder, tap a little bit off, or a lot. <laughs> and then we just go around surfaces. And seeing if we can find any fingerprints. Some other stuff we do on scene is we'll collect DNA. So we'll, we'll swab for DNA just um, on anything that we think maybe the suspect touched and that we can trace it back to them when we send the DNA off to a lab. Um, some other th cool stuff about the uh, crime scene unit is like sometimes on scenes we'll find unique skulls <laughs> or bones that we find. Um, we didn't respond out here for this reason, but we found these um, really cool and interesting animal bones. So we all oftentimes will find that on scenes, which makes life interesting. Danny here is also, uh, what is your title for your expertise in? Um, so whenever I was in school, I studied anthropology. And a part of anthropology is looking at bones and understanding um, kind of, you know, 
being able to identify bones and then also being able to identify if it is a human bone or if it happens to be an animal bone. So like for these ones that we have that I found um, on a scene one day, collected these and these are actually the skull and the tail of a deer. We have been called to scenes where um, a resident of Frederick has found maybe a tiny bone in their backyard. It does happen and oftentimes they are mistakable for human bones, even though they could be animal bones, we don't know. But the right thing to do is call the police so we can properly identify the bone as animal or human and then go from there with the investigation. FPD, one of everyone's favorite locations is our cell area. These cells are very old, but we still do use them on occasion. One of the occasions would be to hold a prisoner prior to transport or for processing of a prisoner. We bring in DUI arrests and we process them in a room nearby. We put every prisoner's property in a locked container also in the room adjacent to this. So this area may be used to house a arrestee for a temporary period of time, but it's always everyone's favorite location to check out. Hello, my name is Officer Quinton with the Frederick City Police. I'm Officer Brum, also with the Frederick City Police Department. And we're part of the outreach unit here at Frederick. Uh, we also have SROs in a couple of schools. And today we're going to, I'm going to be going over with you the gear that we wear on duty while patrolling and doing the daily activities. So that's a police officer. So I'm going to be using Amy here, right here, to, to express and show you exactly what the gear, what the gear is and where it is. So the next portion we're going to be talking about today is the molly carrier. Now the molly carrier is basically the same thing that all the officers have on their belt. It may look intimidating, but actually it's everything that we usually carry on our duty belt is right here and a big old fanny pack. Now in the molly carrier, it also has a ballistic vest. It's inside and it's on the front and the back and some on the sides. This is also for extra protection for us. Now the molly carrier, of course, is the same thing. It has our badge, has our name, and identifies us as officers. Now the next portion we're gonna go over is your duty weapon. Then we have here on the right, of course, stays in the holster at all times. And at the, at the end of the day, we only use it for high risk, like, extreme situations. We never take it out of the holster it's, and it has, and it stays in the holster at all times. Also, if you find anything that looks like a gun that, that you may think is a gun or even rounds, take, we'll take that out. Even rounds that you might see that looks like a bullet, please call police, contact an adult, please call police immediately and do not touch it. Next portion we're gonna go over is the handcuffs. A lot of people don't know, but the handcuffs is also double locked. So a lot of people think that, you know, if you get handcuffs on you, they get tighter, they just automatically get tighter. But actually it's a double lock system on handcuffs where they will not get tight. They won't get off in any way. So you'll be safe once you put it on. Of course, we, we only use it for uh, extreme situations like transporting people or making arrests. Um, the radio. So part of the radio system that we have here uh, is that we have an um, emergency button. This emergency button, depending on the agency you work for, it's uh, it could be called something signal 13, officer down, but this orange button right here is for high, for emergency situations where we need help. If, we, if we're overwhelmed that we can't control the situation, we press that button and we get our backup. Like, like I said, one of the reasons why I love the radio is because it's our communication, our lifeline to the rest of our resources. Um, uh, this right here is our extra uh, holder for any, any equipment that we have. For example, a notepad, our phones, uh, it could be anything, even an extra tourniquet sometimes people carry in there. It's, good, it's a great resource to have on our, um, on our Molly carrier. Um, right here is the expandable baton. The expandable baton can be used for many resources. People think it's just for, you know, wacky people, but actually you can use this for uh, high, uh, high risk situations like a vehicle accident. Someone's stuck in a vehicle and they need to get out, you can break the window to get in. Yeah, 
the pepper spray, of course. This pepper spray, of course, like I always say, is for major situations, situations in which you need to, to control the environment and, and that you feel, uh, fear for your safety. This pepper spray is used for that. This is our taser. Of course, it's yellow because it's, it's so make it easy, easy identifiable, but it's only used for uh, uh, high risk situations, such as a person and individuals that are harm to themselves or others. But other than that, we keep in a holster at all times. The flashlights, all the officers have different locations which they have their flashlights. Sometimes they have it on the side, they have it on top. Um, it depends on the officer, but the flashlight is a good resource when it's dark and you need to be able to see. Um, what's surprisingly funny, crazy part is, is that, you know, the radio may be here, but you can wire the radio system to come over here. So she also has emergency button right here on this radio part, and she's able to adjust the volume and key up on the radio at any time. Um, and that's a great resource to have. Um, the tourniquet. The tourniquet also is a resource that we have. It's uh, to stop major bleeds, not like a paper cut, but an actual bleed and heavy bleed that you need to stop. The, the tourniquet is um, always supposed to go high in the arm or high in the leg to stop those bleeds. The higher it is, the more likelihood to, to save your life or save someone else's. Um, yeah, of course, you know, some officers dip, have different locations in which they have their uh, handcuff keys, but this is a, an example of one. Now, this handcuff key, of course, has the uh, the handcuff portion right here and the double lock system right here, and it can go anywhere. So it kind of looks like a panel here, which is nice. For the most part, a lot of what we do is respond to calls for service from the public. And these can be from anything from like a missing person to a suicidal subject to an accident um, or even like bigger things like a robbery or even um, like a shooting potentially that could happen. Um, so we respond to calls for service. That's our, that's usually what a police officer's main duty is to, to serve the public and um, respond to any, any crisis anybody might be having. But we also have other units in the department as well. Like Officer Quinton said, we're part of the outreach team. That means we're a school resource officer. So we're in the schools a lot of the day. Um, but we also reach out to the public and do, um, we're like for fire and ice, we're out there for fire and Community ice a lot. Community activities. Yeah, exactly. Um, we're in there for like the 4th of July, um, mm -hmm. like all these things we're there for, coffee with the cop. So we, we do a lot of that. There's other units that we have our criminal investigations division, which is our detectives. They, they investigate um, some of the more in-depth crimes that happen. That can be like a, a fraud even. Um, or somebody mm -hmm. like when somebody takes somebody's identity, um, it could be uh, a homicide um, or um, mm -hmm. burglaries, robberies, those kinds of things. They investigate those in-depth situations that need a lot of uh, investigative um, because in patrol, we don't have that, that time to investigate it like mm -hmm. a detective would. Right. We have our street crimes unit which investigates a lot of burglaries and um, does a lot of like drug activity on the streets. So they like to pull over cars uh, that could potentially have um, drug paraphernalia in them. We have our drug unit who investigates in depth uh, like drug investigations um, and stuff like that. So th what they'll do is a lot of times they'll get warrants to search a house um, because they have information that there's like drugs in there. Another unit that we have in the department is our directed patrol unit. These officers oftentimes walk around downtown because it's a heavily populated area. Um, there's a lot of culture, restaurants, and events going downtown town. So we like to have a unit down there to just be present and visible to the public. So lastly, what me and Officer Quentin are gonna talk about is what's our favorite thing about being a police officer? And for me, it's about the fact that every day is different. You know, um, I. I already talked about how we have so many different calls for service that we can respond to, but every day is different, and I, I love that about this job. But I also love, we, we go to certain calls, or we uh, deal with certain families, and sometimes we really make an impact that, on them, and you can definitely see that just by, you know, sometimes just their faces and their gratitude of what we did for them, whether that, that could be um, getting a child out of a dangerous situation, um, or helping a family out with finding a place to stay for the night. So mm -hmm. some of these things like are really impactful for me, and that's why I love being a police officer. Mm -hmm. And honestly, one of the things I like about being, being a police officer is also piggybacking off of what Officer Brum said, is that making an impact. I, I feel as though, you know, in the job you do, 
if you like what you do, it's you never work a day in your life. And I truly enjoy this profession because of the impact we make. I think that we make a difference in so many different ways with families, with, with staff members in schools, with even other officers in the community. I think that what we do makes a difference. Therefore, I believe that, you know, that, that, that being in an SRO is where, you know, where I've always wanted to be. And that, you know, that's kind of in a way, you know, it's, it's, I enjoy it. Therefore, I, I, that's one of the things I always say is that, you know, I, I enjoy this profession because of the impact we all make. Hello, my name is Alsa Duran. I'm with the Frederick City Police Department. I am an SRO attached to the Special Operations Division along as the, with the Outreach Division as well. Today I'm going to show you uh, our office, which is our patrol cars, and give you an in-depth tour on what we uh, have to utilize our tools to keep Frederick safe. Well, to begin with, we're going to go with the driver's side portion of the vehicle which most, most of our tools are available to us in order to utilize them in our daily functions. So welcome to inside of our office, as I would like to say. This is our, uh, one of our patrol uh, SUVs. Uh, we have everything available to the officer that is in this uh, vehicle right at hand's grasp. So we'll start off with the main thing, which is our computers. Our computers here, they tell us everything from calls to service to uh, different um, emails that we have to answer on a regular basis from our supervisors or any other uh, people who are trying to get in contact with us to include citizens. Um, we also have below there is uh, our, all our keys for our emergency equipment. So our lights and sirens, our different uh, style of sirens, our different lights to light up dark areas in order to uh, see uh, where we're going. And we also have a secondary radio there. Uh, the secondary radio, some officers prefer to use it as their main radio until they get out of the vehicle. And some officers uh, prefer to uh, use it uh, as a secondary radio, which is what I do. Uh, along the same area, we have uh, our flashlight, our radio mic, our scanner, and our printer. The scanner and printer are utilized to uh, write traffic citations, and they print out right here once they are complete. The scanner is used to scan uh, identifying documents, such as registration or driver's license. And then we basically have a regular vehicle uh, attached to the police stuff that we have in here. So we also have a uh, spotlight available to us. So we could actually be inside of the vehicle controlling this light, which is on the outside. And it's very powerful, it's very bright, and it's able to light up a uh, large area. Head to the back. Welcome to the back of the vehicle. This is not the full back, but this is right behind the driver and the passenger seat. Uh, this is where we'd have uh, prisoner transports and uh, just another portion of the vehicle, just like any other vehicle on the street. These doors, once they're closed, they cannot be opened from the inside and the window does not function as well for everybody's safety involved. So this is uh, a protection device here that doesn't allow anybody or anything to go in the back or for any of the other equipment and stuff that we carry to come to the front just in case that we are performing emergency maneuvers or uh, having to uh, go a little bit faster than uh, normal to get to an emergency to help some people out. Welcome to the back of the vehicle where we uh, have more equipment that we utilize on a daily basis to do our jobs properly and to serve the citizens of Frederick. So back here 
uh, we keep a lot of equipment that's utilized every day to keep citizens of Frederick safe. We have uh, some, some uh, kits here that contain different breaching tools that we may need. We have some crime scene tape. We have a couple of uh, bloodborne pathogen kits to assist us. Uh, we carry our daily papers here as well. We have a couple of uh, safety kits that allow us to stay safe from the current pandemic that's going on right now. These back here are what's called uh, road flares. These are very bright even during the day. And these will stay lit during all weather conditions and are a vital tool to keep uh, people with disabled vehicles, accidents, as well as officers safe so people can see them coming uh, down the road. This is a, uh, a, a, a Slim Jim sort of thing to assist with opening doors up if a citizen gets locked out of their vehicle. And um, that is that. Pretty much back here, we just have some supplementary tools to assist us to keep the citizens of Frederick safe as we go out on the road. On behalf of the uh, Frederick Police Department, the uh, SRO and Outreach Division, as well as Special Operations Division, we want to thank you for uh, taking the time to watch this video and uh, taking our tour with us today. I hope you enjoyed looking into my office and seeing what we have as we go on to our daily routine to keep Frederick safe. Thank you very much and be safe. Hello everyone, I'm Officer Long with the Frederick Police Department, and this is K-9 Odin. I'm Officer Michael McGrew, and this is K-9 Breaker. K-9 Odin is an explosive detection and patrol dog, and that means that he can detect explosive material and assist with patrol operations, doing a wide variety of tasks that anything that we need to do. Uh, he's about five years old, he's a German Shepherd. I've had him for about three and a half years now. He's my partner, uh, he lives with me and my family at my house. Uh, so we spend all day together, every day at work, and our off time. This is K-9 Breaker. He is a patrol like K-9 Odin, but his odor is narcotics, unlike Odin's odor is explosives. He is three years old. He originally was born in Germany, moved from Germany to Florida, and then now Florida up here in Maryland, where I have him. He lives in my house, comes to me to work every single day. He's great with my kids. So when we receive the dogs initially, um, the only thing that they know how to do is to bite, and they learn that overseas. So we had to teach Odin basic obedience, uh, we had to teach him how to detect explosive odor as well as to track human odor. They're definitely both play driven. They love playing ball, whether it's in the backyard or rewarding from finding the uh, odor they're supposed to find. Both of us completed a 12 week school with both our dogs and successfully passed a uh, North America Police Work Dog Association certification to put us on the street. And we train twice a month for maintenance training, just doing all the stuff we've been, we were trained in that 12 week school. 12 week school, uh, we get the dogs a couple weeks for uh, familiarization so we can get used to each other before we begin training. And all that's done in house by our master trainer. Well the dogs that work with us, we have these vehicles behind us here. Every county handler has one of the vehicles. In the back of the vehicle, back where it says caution police dog is a cage. He has access to water back there and that's where he lives at during the street. Occasionally throughout the day, we'll get him out and use him on patrol, or we'll just get him out and play ball with him and keep him stretched out, that way he's not so cramped in the car all day long. We, we chose to have a explosive dog. We chose to have a Nakar's dog. So that's the odor we start him out from the day one we start odor. Right. Once he's trained explosives, he can't be trained in the other odors. Once Breaker's trained in narcotics, he can't be trained in the other odors. He will be a drug dog till he retires. I'm going to put K-9 Breaker away, and off so long as we'll demonstrate some basic obedience with K-9 Odin here, and then I'll come back out with a K-9 Breaker and do an article search for you guys. Plutz. Plutz. Fuss. Fuss. Plutz. Seat. Seat. Plutz. Plutz. Fuss. Fuss. Good boy. Fuss. Seats. 
Out in. Foos! Foos! Free. Good boy, good boy, good job, buddy. Good boy. Good boy. He's going to do this thing where he spins. He's weird. Else. Else. All right, so K9 Odin is trained. Um, this is his, his favorite thing in the world. He loves a ball. He loves a toy. Um, he knows that he's not supposed to get it unless I say that he can have it. He's, he's been trained to, to leave it alone unless I give him permission to take it. For example, plots. Mine. This is mine. He's not taking it. So I give him permission, I give him his word, which is free, and he takes it. He's free to take it. Good boy. All right, do your thing. Those are German commands that I'm giving the dog. Um, that's just what I chose. I knew some of them. I, Growing up, I just, I just knew some of those terms. So it's German now. It's German is the standard commands that we, we give these dogs going forward. For any new dogs that we're gonna get in the future, mine. So like we said, they're both patrol dogs. One of the things that breakers can do patrol-wise is an article search. This will be done anytime that we have to go find something in a tall grass or anything like that that just human eyes can't see. We're asking Breaker to use his nose to sell the human scent off those articles. So for this demonstration, like I have a set of keys here. I'm just gonna toss them out here someplace. Got a little coin here, toss it out there someplace. And I got a pocket knife here, toss it out someplace too. Now I'm gonna ask Breaker to go find that with his nose. Once he finds it, he's gonna lay down right beside it, right in front of it, and tell me where it's at. Search. See how his nose is on the ground this half time? He's just trying to find that human odor. So he gets worried by the ball to find the odor. Here. Search. Found the one, I just told him to go find another one again. Here. Check. All I'm doing is redirecting him into the area I want him to check. Here. Here. Odin is a German Shepherd. Um, he's actually a cross. He's got a little bit of Belgian Mountain Law in him. And the reason that these dogs are, you see is typically are used as police dogs, so they have very strong drives. Um, for example, Odin has a very strong ball drive, and that enables us to be able to train him to do certain things using the ball as a reward. Um, not all German Shepherds, not all Belgian Mountain Laws are going to make good police dogs. It's all about the individual dog's drives and traits. So Odin is an explosives detection dog, and that means that he can smell explosive odor and let me know when he smells that. And that way I, we can make the, the proper notifications to keep everybody safe. Some of the things that we use him for are any special event that you see downtown or in the city of Frederick, we'll be there to make sure that it's safe for everyone. Uh, if there's a serious crime, like a shooting, for example, we can, we can use Odin to look for evidence, uh, expended shell casings, firearms, things like that. He's a valuable tool to the city of Frederick. And if you ever see him out, feel free to ask me if you want to pet him and we'll make that happen for you. I wanted to be a canine handler from the time I was very young. I grew up um, around it. My father was a canine handler. Um, I knew that from very young that I wanted to grow up, I wanted to handle a dog. I became a canine handler in this department because I always wanted to be a handler. I grew up training dogs and doing dog agility with dogs. And this is kind of the best of my passion with my uh, job. And I love to come to work every day with a dog.